The devil is busy, but the devil will not win today. With technological advances, we are able to be together, but sometimes we have snafus. But God is in this place and we will begin the service. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations, and in every place incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life 
and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitence and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite witness and mercy. Amen. Amen. Um, we need to do the uh, confession before I do the absolution. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, Our word, and word deed, indeed. by, by what, what we have done, done and by, and by what, what we have left undone. undone. We, we have, have not loved, loved you with our whole heart. heart. We have not, we loved, have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are we truly, truly sorry. sorry and we humbly repent. Amen. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, Amen. have mercy on us Amen. and forgive Amen. us that Amen. we may delight in your will Amen. and walk, and walk in, in your ways Amen. to the glory of your name. Amen. 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 Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall your prayer. Glory to the Father, and, and to, to the Son, and, and to the Holy to the Spirit. Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, come, let us adore, adore him. Come, let us adore. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with song. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand, are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today we would hearken to his voice. Psalm 29, please respond by verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory to his name. Worship the Lord in holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice, the voice of the Lord, Lord is a powerful voice. The voice, the voice. The voice, the voice of, of the Lord, Lord is a voice, voice of thunder. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon dip like a cat and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord spits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kaddish. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness of And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Together, glory, glory to the, the Father, Father and to the Son, and to the Son 
and to, and the, Holy to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, is now, and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Reading from Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks be to God. A reading from Luke. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the tongue of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the body the form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The word of the Lord. Thanks, uh, thanks be to God. We have had uh, in December two readings regarding John the Baptist. Now we're getting a third reading 
that is uh, very similar uh, with the exception of the actual baptism of Jesus taking place. It's interesting in looking at this because all four Gospels refer to this event, and in in, um, John is the strangest in that he talks about the event, but doesn't describe the event itself. Um, meanwhile, uh, Matthew and Mark um, look at it from in a subjective way, from Jesus seeing this himself. It's not clear that others around him see it, but that he sees it. Luke is different in that he, it is objective to Luke. Um, everybody around Jesus n sees this along with Jesus. And so that is, a, that is one of the differences. The other, the other thing that's different about this is the, is the role of John the Baptist. Um, John, John's gospel um, hardly connects John to baptizing Jesus. Um, Luke is vague about it. And Matthew and Mark make it certain that John baptized Jesus. And there is, between Luke and, uh, and then Matthew and Mark, the difference is, is that Matthew and Mark see John as the first person of the New Testament. Luke sees John as the last person of the Old Testament. And so John or uh, John the Baptist to Luke, he's sort of an appendage, just a sort of a, an attachment back to the past. Now, what is actually happening in terms of our understanding of theology, of, of the, particularly of the Trinity? What is going on here? And I, I think it's fascinating in that you have both the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Father, um, participating in this event, the Holy Spirit coming upon him like a dove, descending from heaven upon him. And so the Holy Spirit um, is, is affirming what, uh, what Jesus already is. He's the Son of God. Uh, that was done with Luke in, in the Annunciation in, in Nazareth, when, when the Holy Spirit uh, um, would, would, would be with Mary and carry this forward. But um, you, then you have the father speaking, saying, this is my son, uh, my beloved, listen to him. And so you have the father and the spirit affirming Jesus as God the son. Now, what is the value of this to Jesus? We can, we can see it because we model our own baptisms upon his, and, and that makes perfect sense. We're seeing a difference between, right here, a difference between Christian baptism and the baptism of repentance that John was providing. It's, the, the whole rite has moved into a different area of belonging. As we model Jesus' life, we too become baptized, and we become part of the kingdom of God, we become, uh, we receive the Holy Spirit, uh, we, we, we know that we receive grace from the Father, which means favor, and so there are all kinds of privileges, not to mention perhaps the one that is most visible, and that's the joining of the community. But an interesting question to me is, what did the baptism of Jesus mean to Jesus? What would he have said to the disciples um, six months, a year, 18 months later? What, what, did he, what did that mean to him? And it might be um, that it was a, the baptismal event was a touchstone, that when Jesus and his humanity would begin to worry or fret or need time with prayer, um, he could perhaps go back to this event to feel better emotionally, to, uh, to touch base with who, he, he, who he's called to do, what he's called to do and who he's to be with, and that he is the Son of God. And, and, there's, and, and so it's a touchstone. I, um, 
I can relate to this in a, in a way, and I don't want you to think at all that I'm comparing ordination to baptism, but when I was ordained a bishop, um, I have to admit, uh, I was scared. I said, Lord, what are you doing with me? And uh, I, I um, as, as things would unfold, and I would find myself in some sort of a situation that I'd not been in before, people looking at to me to, to make a decision, my wanting to make the right decision, trying to do the homework and all that. And finally, you have to come to a decision. And I would find myself going back to that ordination and saying to myself, I was ordained to do this. And God's speaking to me saying, I put you in charge here. Now do it. If you don't feel the strength of what you're supposed to do, then you go back to that event and remember what was what was done on on your behalf and and go forward with that and and i can't tell you the comfort that 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 gave me and what i want to do in concluding my part of this homily is to ask of you if you can remember events it doesn't it isn't just about ordination it could be about uh receiving a diploma from uh from uh a school of uh, a professional diploma that allows you to say be a physician or a dentist or to 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 put you in a position to have a job that uh, that draws on your education uh, it might be um, it might be simply elected by others to to be a leader in some sort of a capacity and you then sit there and say well who am i to do this and it goes back to that time of affirmation when you were elected or selected to do that. And so I want to throw that open and because what's behind it is there's a role. And the role is uh, um, you're expected to, to, to be in it. And I, I've heard clergy say this about ordination. I don't like the role. Well, you can't run away from the role because other people look to you. They see you in that light. Of, of it's not who you were, but what you've become. By the way, that's one of the problems Jesus had with Nazareth. They couldn't see what he'd become. Uh, and uh, as they, they were just stuck in the old way. The truth is, is that when we move into new roles, um, we can do one of two things. We can follow the role slavishly, or we can work with our um, ingenuity and our creativity to advance the role. The one thing that is disastrous is to deny the role, to act like it doesn't exist at all. And so it's out of that that I throw this open to you all. So uh, go for it. Let's have some fun with this. Bishop, the birth, the birth of my son was a point of big responsibility. I, uh, I still feel that responsibility uh, with my daughter, my grandchildren. And um, for me, you can't run away from it. Amen. Amen. I can clearly relate to that one. And uh, as I like to say, my, uh, I've, my children have taught me so much. I wonder sometimes if I've taught them anything. I look at this group of people, and there's a lot of leadership in this group, a lot of people who've done things. And uh, so uh, I, I want you to think about this. Uh, any ideas, anything you want to share? Because I appreciate hearing from you. Well, it was probably about, um, I guess, about 15 years ago. When a group of ladies here in this diocese decided that they were going to um, nominate me to be the president of the diocesan ECW. And um, it took me a long time to come to that decision to even say yes. But even as we approached it and we um, the installation was to happen, it was a huge, huge burden on my shoulders because not only would I lead these women of this diocese over many churches, 
but I was also to be the first African-American in this diocese to hold that position. And I tell you, I, 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 I had to uh, actually kind of psych myself up to, to go out and do this. Um, not only for the women of the diocese, but for the women of my church, uh, surely that I would be representing. So yeah, I was frightened as to whether I would do it well, if it would come out the way God intended. And I do understand being frightened, taking on, on new leadership, Bishop Jay. And it worked out, didn't it? Well, I grew into that position. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With God's help, I grew into that position. Yeah. For me, um, it was the day that I received a call from Dorothy Holder asking me to be the retreat leader for the, e the diocesan ECW retreat. And um, I felt like that, you know, I had speaking engagements in the past but this was supposed to be a weekend. And this was not just, you know, a few people, this was not just my church family. This was all the women of the diocese that I was to um, give some words of wisdom, some message um, that God had called me to deliver. And um, I, I didn't want to do it. I absolutely didn't want to do it. And I felt like, I, I you know, I felt like I, I don't want to tell her no, because, you know, that's my auntie. <laughs> but at the same time, um, I knew that that God was calling me to do something more than what I was doing. And so that was a, a huge deal. And um, I did rise to the occasion and and it felt really good um, delivering that. I was very nervous, um, but it, it felt really good delivering that that message that weekend. Did you find moments where um, you sensed something that you were affirmed? And in, in other words, sort of like, I was selected to do this. There must've been a reason I was selected to do this. Now I'll do it. Because uh, in spite of the concerns or fears, you sense God is with you through the affirmation of other people. Does that make sense? It does. And, and there was a moment where I felt that way. Um, it wasn't... Um, it was a little bit during the preparation because it took a lot of study, um, a lot of research. Um, but I also felt that way during, you know, the the event because um, this event was special because it was during the pandemic, and we had not had a retreat during the pandemic, and um, I was nervous because. You know, usually it's it's three, you know, three days, it's over three days. And um, this was just going to be a one day event. And, and I felt like because of that, it had to be great. But it's like I felt like a newbie and that how how can I how can I make this great? Um, so I felt, you know, this this weight on my shoulders. But once I, you know, had the microphone in my hand and I started talking and I started getting into my comfort zone, I felt like God had called me to be there. There you go. There you go. Uh, I want to put our senior warden on the spot. It's always fun to do this to Tony, but uh, what was it like um, when you received your uh, graduation from dental school and suddenly you're working on a patient's mouth for, for the fir first time without any supervision, or it's possible that occurred before, um, before you uh, received your, your degree. Um, how about sharing the first time you had to solo um, as a dentist? I, I'll go, I'll go for a little further than that, a little further back. The, um, you, when you're in dental school, you first do the theories and they, you go to lectures and stuff. And then the first time you're working on a patient, that's when you're nervous. You work on your classmates. And the first thing you have to do is to give an anesthesia. <laughs> okay. And it's almost as if you're sweating it out to make sure you don't make a mistake. And 
you know, at that time I was not um, involved in Christianity as much, but there's, there, there's something that comes along that gives you the confidence to go ahead and do it. And you, if, if you're nervous, you realize if you're nervous, the patient will be nervous. You have to show some show confidence and give confidence to your patient. And as, as it evolved and you graduate, you learn, it, it's something you grow into. And when Linda spoke about growing into a position, you grow as a Christian. You grow as a dentist. Every time you do something, you're growing. You're strengthening yourself. So, you know, the question you ask is, 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 is maybe some parallel to it. But, you know, when you are baptized, when, when, when you begin the, the walk, you're not certain about where you'll go. But as you walk further along, whether it's in a profession, or just as a Christian, as you walk further, and with the support of others, you grow. And I think that's where it's important that you keep growing. I, I don't know if that answers the question, but th that's the part. Right. It's, it's, it does. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Um, I just wanted to um, tell uh, the congregation of some of the things that the technology depart uh, team went through when we started our uh, live stream. Uh, we had started live stream and and we tried to do it with Bluetooth and and our web and our um, Wi-Fi and we kept dropping it. Finally, Father Dennis asked us to do it for Easter, and we decided to go a different route on it. And the day of Easter, uh, we had said we were going to tape the service just as a backup. But when uh, we got that, Athlete said, nope, we're not taping it. We're going to go on faith, and we're going to make sure that this works. And we were so afraid, all of us, that we would let the church down by not being able to do the live stream starting Easter Sunday. And so we didn't tape it. We prayed before the service started. Everything worked, and we prayed after. And from lessons learned, it, it turned out fine every Sunday afterward, practically. Well, not all the time, but most of the time. Yeah, yeah. This is Alma. Yes, ma'am. When I was elected regional, Southeast Regional Director for the UBE, we were in... Um, Atlantic City, New Jersey. And we were having our meeting and all of a sudden my name came up and the vote came up and I'm sitting there like, what, what just happened? At that time, we had 13 chapters that I would be responsible for. I had been president of the chapter in Jacksonville, but never had the responsibility of leadership for 13 other presidents and their chapters. And you're talking about scared. I was petrified because number one, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. And with the help of my local chapter, my national chapter members, I, I was like Tony. I grew into it and ended up, we gave one of the best national conferences in Jacksonville under that my leadership and with the help of every member of UBE. But it's, it's the same with my nursing profession. You have to grow into it and you only grow into it if you are confident that God is with you. And each time 
that you put out something or you attempt something, if you put God before you, my philosophy is nothing will go wrong. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, I wanted to wind something up with a comment, but uh, um, anybody else want to share? Because there's been some really good sharing here. This is Ed Wright. I'd like to share something. I worked for the government for a long time, too long. And back in 92, when quality management came on the scene with uh, Edward Deming, our agency was in a pickle. And they decided somebody in, in his wisdom, our chief, I believe, decided that they would select 12 people from the agency to rule out quality management to 14,000 employees. And I was one of the 12 mm -hmm. to go out and do this. And we were sent out in teams of two. Parallel? Yes. The first time we did that, first time I did that. I did it with a person that I knew because we'd been through uh, a lot of training. But the first time I did that, it was, I was, it was, I was afraid. Yes. But we had prepared ourselves um, in more ways than one. We had been 3M and they had certified us. And of course we had done a lot of praying, especially I had. And we rolled that out in 12 months. Everybody in, in the agency <clears throat> had received the training in 12 months and it was very successful. And we got better, I got better as we went along. In fact, I did one session uh, solo. Uh, I had that much confidence uh, as we moved along. And I think that well, I know that a lot of the reason for that is first it was preparation, then it was accepting the challenge, and then it was praying a lot and practice. And it worked. All right. Um, I was wondering if any of you who are, uh, have a military background um, know what it's like to be promoted and you go through ceremony, putting your hand up to support and defend the Constitution, and uh, now you're in a new role, uh, whether it be officer or enlisted, uh, in which suddenly you're supervising or have responsibility for more people than you had before. I don't know if anyone is here that has, has, uh, has been through the military. Um, I have, and uh, I remember making captain uh, all of a sudden I'm looking around, there's nobody to tell me what to do. And so, and so there's the harshest critic of all comes out, which is me of myself trying to do the right thing, but it's a role and you, you grow into it. Um, anybody else that's anybody else that's uh, gone through military uh, could explain that. I don't know if Claudette's on, but I know she has. Um, okay. I'm going to go Eileen. Yes, yeah, Eileen, good to hear you. Um, I, my military experience, uh, one of the things that I can relate to and what you're saying is I had worked at the unit level for most of my career. And then I got an assignment to uh, South Korea and I was put at the base level in a supervisory position and in the HR area and had to learn new stuff and as well supervise other folks. Um, as a non-commissioned officer enlisted, um, it was like everybody else stated, it was frightening. Um, my officer in charge, uh, she didn't have a whole lot of confidence in me, but I went through with that nervousness, I spoke to the people who were gonna be reporting to me and I let them know what I expected 
and that we would work as a team together. And by the time I left um, Korea, I had received accolades from the base commander and other folks who had come through our office and received excellent customer service. So that was a, a building of my confidence and moving forward as a supervisor um, in my military career. And these, these events where we achieve, they don't stop. You know, in other words, that becomes a part of our personality, our character, our, our sense of competence. Uh, and not only do we see it in ourselves, but, uh, but other people see it as well. And uh, so thank you for sharing that, Aileen, appreciate it. We probably need to move on, but I wanna just say this one thing in conclusion. Notice that uh, every, every person that spoke today, but also Jesus, these, he, we were the passive one. We didn't go and seize something. We uh, might've applied and worked towards it, but it's others who bestow this upon us. And this was true for Jesus himself, that he didn't go uh, looking for the dove and the, and the voice. Uh, they just came. And so Father and Son, uh, 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 Holy Spirit and, and Father came together with him to affirm him in who he was. And he was this way before. It wasn't just some transition. It's not something where, where he knew uh, who he didn't know who he was until now. It's not like that at all, but it is a touchstone. And I'm sure that uh, Jesus looked back with that memory with, with not only fondness, but uh, a, a realization that this started the, the active ministry. And because of that, it was an important event. So thank you for, for sharing. And uh, I hope you will uh, reflect this week and beyond about the importance of roles and, um, and we, should, we shouldn't be enslaved to roles, but we are called to uh, transition with them. And we can make a difference so that successors uh, in a certain position can have a much better uh, uh, appreciation of the role that they're, that they're inheriting, as opposed to um, uh, either be feeling enslaved to it or um, denying it, um, because the role is there, whether we like it or not. And, uh, and the, when we grow into it, we can really appreciate it. And I need to stop and, and turn this over to James. Thank you for your participation today. Appreciate it. Splendor and honor, our kingly and kingly power, are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God. For every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the lamb, be worship and praise dominion and splendor forever and evermore. Let us pray together the apostles creed to reaffirm our faith. I believe in God. God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended he to, the to the dead. On, On the third day, day he, he rose again. again. He, he ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right, at hand, the right hand, hand of the Father. He will, he will come again 
all to men. judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, the, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, be, hallowed thy be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, I will be, I will be, be done on earth, earth as it is in yes. heaven. Give us, Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time, please add your petitions and thanksgivings and intercessions. I pray for all those children who are continuing to go to school, um, knowing that the Omicron variant um, is running rampant in our world. And I just pray for their safety and the safety of those who have to travel for work. For Lori Johnson, who's made a, a really good uh, recovery from back surgery this week. I pray for all those who are suffering from the COVID uh, infection, including my brother, Earl, and pray that they may be recovered. Pray for your healing hands, Lord so that they all may recover and protect those who have not yet been vaccinated from getting the infection. Amen. Amen. I lift up our UBE chapter, St. Philip's, the Cathedral, and St. Gabriel, who will be sponsoring our Martin Luther King celebration at the on Saturday at 11. I pray that those who are in attendance will come away with becoming a more beloved community. Amen. I ask prayers for my wife, May Ruth, who's uh, trying to uh, find a solution to, to various health problems. Uh, that uh, the Lord might guide her to the right people so that corrective action can be taken. Amen. I pray for Rick Robinson, that he will continue in his rehabilitation. I ask that you continue to look after Dorothy Holder as uh, she deals with uh, the loss of Percy. Um, please bless her and, and encourage her and, and comfort her, Lord, uh, during this time. Amen. Lord, Lord, we thank you for the people of St. Philip's who we learned as far exceeded their financial giving for the church. We ask you to continue to bless us both giving and giving financially in the time and talent. Amen. Amen.
Are there any other prayers? Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise you forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy, have mercy upon us. us. Lord, have mercy. have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, in you Lord, is our hope. And, and we shall never hope. hope in vain. Amen. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, whom with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. 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 Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to a, this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy Amen. servants, give you humble thanks for all Amen. your goodness Amen. and loving kindness to us Amen. and to all Amen. whom you have made. We bless you. We bless you for your creation, preservation, Amen. and all the blessings, blessings of, of this life. But above, but above all, all for your immeasurable love. love in the redemption Amen. of the world. By our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful heart we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By, by giving, giving up ourselves, ourselves to your, your service and by, by walking, walking before you, you in the holiness and righteousness all days. days. Through Jesus Christ, our Christ, Lord, our Lord. Yes, to whom you, you, and you and the Holy Spirit be honor and Lord. glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. 
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, as we uh, move towards uh, uh, understanding what it means to be called into certain responsibilities and opportunities, um, let us do so with joy in our hearts. And the very word blessing means happiness. And so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. 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 Take me to the Thank you all so much for being here. Very quickly, uh, we do have a prayer service uh, tomorrow evening by teleconferencing and Bible study Tuesday evening at 6.30 uh, by teleconferencing as well. We do have uh, the prayer service on Friday morning by Zoom. Same, well, not this particular connection, but the information will be coming out to you as well. We do have uh, the... Uh, uh, the uh, the vestry 
uh, preparing for the annual meeting to coming, uh, coming up. The announcement will be forthcoming uh, for the congregation to be prepared. And of course, the Spec Connect does have some uh, information in regards to the candidates associated with um, uh, election for next year and new leadership. As uh, Bishop Jay has charged us all, we are called to lead and we're all called to a mission. Um, any other announcements, Bishop, or? Nope, we're good. Martin Luther King celebration. That's next Saturday at uh, the cathedral. At 11, 11 o'clock. God bless you all. We love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yes, so, there is. I love you even more. <laughs> <laughs> bless you all and have a great day. And all stay right. safe. Please do. I love you all. Bye-bye. You should have had Chris stay on. No. Okay. Monster that should have gone to the program with that big look at that thing on his arm. Good day, everybody. <laughs>